Hello, in the last class we have seen what is folklore and folk art. In today's class, let us discuss what is the importance of folklore and folk art and what is its relevance in the society. But before that, let us see, let us recapitulate a little bit what we had done in the last class. In the last class, we had seen the difference between fine art and folk art. To sum up, let us see the points that differentiates fine art from the folk art. Fine art focuses more on aesthetic and is learned through formal instruction and training, while folk art encompasses one's culture in a deeper manner. Folk artists mostly learn without formal training. In folk art, context is important. That is, the society that it comes from is reflected in the art. That is why the context is important. Folk art are largely utilitarian, that is they have utility value, they, are, uh, they come handy in day to day matters. Folk art is waved into everyday life. Folk art connects the past to the present, because it entails tradition, so it connects the past to the present. Folk art reflects the worldview of a community. Folk art has been of interest and object of inquiry not only for the folklorists, but there have been attempts to define and understand folk art from various scholarly disciplines. In the 1970s, the difficulty of theorizing folk art was intensified by competing scholarly factions. Art collectors and connoisseurs from art history standpoint categorized the folk object into paintings, sculptures, decorative arts and then aestheticized them in terms of the material and design. In opposition were folklorists, who connected folk art to material culture and view in the context of the culture that produced it. For collectors and historians, folk art was a new artistic category to name and describe. Folklorists and ethnologists interpreted the folk objects as a document for understanding the lives, stories and motivation of individuals living in a particular time and space. Now, let us pay some attention to these two paintings. On the left is a painting of uh, by a very renowned Indian artist Manu Parekh and on the right is a Sohrai painting of Jharkhand. The left, the painting on the left is part of the Banaras series that Manu Parekh is renowned, renowned, renowned for. He is known to paint the teeming ghats and Temple spice set against the orange hues of sunsets and cobalt blue skies. Whereas, the Sohrai paintings are particular to the region they come from. Immediately after Diwali, the walls of tribal houses of Jharkhand start scintillating with the layers of indigenous white mud to welcome the winter harvest, to worship the cattle as the gods of wealth, and to offer a thanksgiving to the forces of nature. The tribal communities, mostly the Santhal, Munda, Prajapati, Kurmi, etc., of Charkhan and West Bengal, celebrate a festival called Sohrai in the month of October and November. The tribal women decorate the mud houses, repairing it after the rains with designs of flowers, fruits, sparrows, peacocks, squirrels, cows, and various other nature inspired designs. These wall paintings of Jharkhan are traditionally known as Sohrai, named after the namesake Harvest Festival. So, we see that the folk art are very conceptual, they, they talk a lot about the society they come from. But what are the purposes of folklore? Why do they exist in the society? Folklore serve as educational tool for preliterate society. In society which has not been touched by formal education, the folklore items serve as educational material. They talk, they talk a good deal about wisdom, about knowledge and they try to proliferate the traditional knowledge through these tools. Guides and art advice and passed on knowledge that are essential for living. They are like a guidebook, they talk about, they give you advice, they tell you how to go about life. So, this, they folklore exists as guides and advice for societies. Emphasize values of culture, they entail a lot of values which the generations after generations are passed on. The, uh, so, this is another uh, uh, purpose of folklore. Highlights the social and political order of the society. So, the social and political order is 
emphasized and it is tried to be maintained by passing on this knowledge through folklore. Explains the in inexplicable. So, there are many things which are not explicable. Uh, so, folklore material provides an explanation to this uh, phenomena. Reflect the fear, anxiety, gratitude, etcetera, of the society. And last but not the least, it is entertainment. For the first uh, uh, point, educational, let us uh, pay some attention to this phrase. It is one of the Kabir's Doha. Kal kare jo so aaj kar, aaj kare so ab, pal mein pralai hoegi, bahodi karo get up. So, this is a uh, uh, phrase which and it tells us the importance of time. It tells us that how you should respect time and if you have to do something tomorrow, do it, finish it off today because you never know what happens the next moment. So, it uh, tries to instill a uh, value for time. It tells people to, to respect time, only then you will be able to succeed in life. Essential life knowledge. So, as you see, this is one of the example that I have cited from uh, Panchatantra. This is a story of the Brahmani and the ma mongoose. So, it this story actually tells you, gives you a model that think hard and do not do anything, do not do anything in haste. That is, it tells you to uh, be patient and you know, uh, think uh, carefully before doing anything. So, the story goes that uh, once a Brahmin uh, befriended a mongoose and he brought him home. The, Brahm, the Brahmin's wife was little skeptical that the mongoose is kept at home. So, but even then she agreed. One day when uh, both the Brahmin and the Brahm, uh, his wife had gone out, the uh, lady had asked the Bra mongoose to look after the small kid which was lying in the cradle. So, after returning she saw blood all over the ground. She thought that the mongoose had eaten away the small baby, but in reality uh, a snake had come to attack the baby and the mongoose had saved it, but without thinking anything the, uh, the lady she killed the mongoose which uh, she thought had harmed the baby. It was actually the friend of the baby who had saved it. So, this uh, story tells the importance of thinking wisely and not to do anything in uh, haste. So, this is a purpose of folklore that it tells us how to go about life and gives us life knowledge. Values of culture. So, uh, folklore another uh, another purpose of folklore is that it uh, entails it uh, uh, contains the values of a culture. So, this is one example that I have uh, put is um, many of you might have heard about the Vedanta project that was supposed to be done in Odisha in Nyamgiri hill and the tribal community called Dongriya Kon were very much against it. They did not want the mining uh, corporation to come and you know. Uh, uh, uproot, uproot them from their region and start the bauxite mining because they thought the Niamgiri mountain was uh, their ancestor. It was uh, it was their god, and they did not want to separate from their god and their ancestor. So you see that how much importance this uh, community gives to the the mountain range. So folklore, this folk belief, and you know, uh, contains the values of a culture. Social and political order. For this, I have given I have. Uh, put a uh, picture of this uh, uh, small boy or Satare Mao community of Brazil. Uh, this is a custom that is followed when a boy is about 12 years of age and it is a custom that is done to celebrate this uh, transformation of a small boy from being a boy to a warrior. So, what happens in this uh, custom? A uh, boy has to wear gloves in his two hands which has uh, bullet ants and this uh, boy is supposed to endure this pain of this thousands and millions you know of ant bite in his hand for about uh, 5 minutes and this is done over a period of time for about 20 times and only when the boy is able to endure this kind of pain he is supposed to have become a warrior from being a boy. So, this, uh, this way the community maintains a social and political order. So, this is how the boy becomes the warrior and he is, uh, he is initiated into warriorhood. Explanation of the inexplicable. So, there are many phenomena in uh, which uh, are not easily explicable. So, folklore tries to explain them and give us a, 
uh, you know more or less uh, satisfactory answer why certain things happen. So, this is a story a folk tale about uh, eco and narcissus uh, and this story tells us why there is eco in the mountains and why there is uh, why the flower narcissus always looks towards the water. So, the story goes that eco was a very talkative uh, nymph who used to live in a mountain and she was uh, cursed by the goddess Juno who had come looking for her husband, but because uh, uh, Eco liked to talk so much she was not listening to her what she wanted and she kept on talking. So, Juno cursed her that you will not be able to talk and only can repeat something that you have heard last. So, this was a curse given to her. Then what happens is that she uh, 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 Eco falls in love with a very good looking young guy called Narcissus and she wanted to express her love for him, but she was not able to do so because she could not speak anything and she could only repeat what she had heard last. And whereas, on the other hand Narcissus fell in love with his own uh, image in the water, he kept on looking at himself and thinking how beautiful this image is. So, he told that uh, you are so beautiful and that way Eco got a chance and so she said you are so beautiful. When Narcissus said that I am in love with you, uh, Eco repeated it saying that I am in love with you. This way she was able to express her uh, feelings for Narcissus, but Narcissus when uh, the image in the water vanished he was too sad and he also jumped into water and, uh, and he uh, you know got uh, submerged, but uh, Eco was very sad at this, in, uh, at this and she roamed around in the, in the mountains. It is said that that is why we he hear echo in the mountains when we talk something and it, it comes back to us, the sound com comes back to us because echo is roaming around in the mountain. Same with the flower Narcissus always looks towards the water when it is near the uh, uh, near some water body. So, these are two phenomena which is tried to be explained by this folk tale. So, this is one purpose of folk tale that it tries to explain to us things that are not easily explicable. The next is emotions of the society. This is one uh, uh, picture of the Nongkrem festival of uh, Shillong uh, celebrated by the Khasi community. It is a Thanksgiving uh, festival where uh, people gather uh, and uh, girls wear colorful clothes and uh, there is you know day, uh, days together there is festivity and uh, the girls dance in their colorful costumes. It is a kind of thanksgiving for the wonderful harvest they have had and people come gather there and uh, to take part in this thanksgiving uh, ceremony. So, this is a uh, you know way of the folk uh, you know uh, elements of folklore are supposed to uh, depict the emotions of the society. The folk dance here is trying to depict the thanksgiving uh, emotion of the community. Entertainment. So, this is a picture of Bhan Patel of Jammu and Kashmir region. These are stories which are uh, satirical and are very uh, humorous and uh, the Bhan, Bhan which is the you know main character, he talks, he talks about various issues, he talks about the political order, he talks about the societal you know wrongdoings and he makes it very witty and very uh, jovial, so that people enjoy, but also get the message. So, this is uh, another feature of uh, for folklore that it is entertainment, people escape from the drudgery of life looking at the folk, folklore material. So, these are the features of folklore, folklore is deeply connected to the nation, uh, you can know the you know uh, essence of the nation by looking at the folkloric material, it belongs to the common people, the common people are the um, you know, author or you know uh, owners of the folkloric material. It contains deep meaning in simple expression. You see simple stories, you see simple uh, uh, songs, and, but they contain a lot of deeper meaning. The group may be big or small, uh, the group uh, sometimes contains thousands of people, but it might also uh, consist of a handful of people. Uh, the group members are connected to one another through shared traditions. So, the group members uh, uh, shares something in common and which they call the tradition. So, this is these are the few features of folk, folklore. So, what are the functions of folklore? What functions are they supposed to fulfill in a society? Scholars have listed this six functions of folklore. 
first is psychological. Jokes, riddles, metaphors, tales and performance as well as art highly entertain the people and are distraction from their humdrum and the daily needs of life. Stories and anecdotes assert often cultural symbols and values and shape individuality. Archetypes and hero figures instill courage and love amongst the listeners. Folk customs, rituals and narratives enrich individual interaction with the community. Stories that emphasize good over evil, wicked demons getting slain, witches getting locked up in cages and thrown away immediately gratify the viewers. Folklore maintains group cohesion and interaction. For example, games make children cooperative and bond with each other in a community. Superstition riddles often reflect the social, social context. Individuals and social taboos are also either reinforced or denigrated by the folklore. Myths and legends either mirror or distort the reality of society and reflect the individual position in society. This picture is of another uh, story in, uh, in the folk tale of India called Hitopodesia. This is about a Brahmin and the Brahmin here is shown, shown to be a very foolish guy. So, uh, this, uh, uh, it happens that the Brahmin buys this goat, but uh, uh, there are three thieves who are eyeing on the goat and they say that uh, being a Brahmin, they try to mock him by saying that being a Brahmin, you are carrying a, a dead cow on your shoulders. What kind of Brahmin are you? So, um, uh, the uh, Brahmin believes them and uh, you know he leaves the goat and he goes away. So, in this, uh, in this uh, story, the Brahmin is shown to be a foolish guy. In, uh, so, uh, in, in, in real society, a Brahmin is supposed to be who is uh, learned and he is also supposed to be somebody from the higher alliance in the society. But folkloric material try to subvert this. They try to show that the Brahmin is stupid, the Brahmin is foolish. This is a way in which the you know there is some kind of resistance, some kind of restraint is exercised uh, by the society at large. Second is functional. Folklore also entails traditional knowledge and wisdom, how to grow crops, folk medicine, recipes etcetera. Rites of passage help the individuals to integrate with the society. Weddings, newborn baby birth ceremony, death rites are such examples. This custom accompanied the change of place, state, social status and age. In this, the social and the physical position of an individual is either altered or reinforced. It is a cultural socialization process. Important symbols and values of the people are often expressed in traditional and passed down from one generation to another. Folklore hence passes on pre-existing ethics and standards of the society. So, we get to know about the recipes, the you know the traditional knowledge of weaving etcetera uh, through ha handing over this knowledge from generations to generations. So, it uh, folklore also serves a functional purpose. Religious, legends about say, uh, saints like that of Sant Kabir. Uh, Tukaram, supernatural narratives like the myths of Krishna, magic and occult practices are deeply religious in context. Talesmen and totem, proverbs and sayings, folk songs, dance and theatre, use of devotional texts, etc. Folk religion differs from formal re state religion. Folk belief also gets manifested in healing contexts such as occultism and folk medicine. The belief system is largely communicative. Some religious rites are performed during time of crisis, for example, the practice of occult and shamanism to remove illness. Some uh, religious rites are performed periodically like special rites are performed while cutting the grain during Vaisakhi and uh, rituals of New Year, Gudi Parva in Gujarat and Pongal in South. Religious rites have uh, social goals that make ritual symbolic. So, this is one picture of the Karam festival of Jharkhand. So, folkloric materials are also religious. Historical national, folklore inspires national and ethnic pride. This is done through the development, preservation, imitation and collection of literature, language and tradition. This picture is of hero of Assam, Lashid Barfukan, who had successfully defeated the Mughals and he has chased him, them out of the region. He this, um, this folk hero is revered even today. So, um, 
folkloric materials are also historical national in character. Economic Folklore has also made great contribution to economic life cycle of the people. This can be seen in the creation of material culture that has economic as well as utilitarian base. Crafts are one such example. It is a process through which goods are created by hand. Craft can become essential to the daily utilities of life as well as have some decorative and spiritual functions. They are also provide with basic equipments needed for domestic life to be its tools, furnishing, furnishing houses, clothes, etc. Folklore also presents opportunities for consumption for the selling. It has become a pivotal point through which tourists are attracted. Many craft bazaars are held all over India that create an opening for sale and economic transa transaction. So, the crafts also fulfill economic uh, necessity of certain communities, certain artisans. So, this is another uh, purpose of folklore material. Cross-cultural, all folklore material is based on commonality and intercultural diffusion. This helps us to imagine that we all live in pluralistic, open-ended and free world in which every society possesses its own unique history and values. For example, the folk tales have tra traveled far and wide. One folk tale can be of dif in different versions in different society. We have seen that the Panchatantra has traveled to various regions of uh, the world and it has been translated to various languages. The folklore material is cross-cultural. It uh, goes beyond the boundary, cultural boundaries and of uh, you know nation or region. So, let us now uh, having this in our background now, let us look back at the divisions of folklore that we have uh, discussed in the previous class. The divisions are four, oral literature, material culture, social folk custom and performing folk arts. These are the subdivisions or of oral folklore or folk literature, folk poems, songs or oral verbal song that, that can again be divided into ballet, religious song, love song, working song, festival song, ritual song, philosophical song, hunting song. Then there is another division of uh, oral folklore that is prose narrative that can again be subdivided into myth, legend, folk tale. The, there is another division of proverb, sayings, maxims, another division of riddle, another division of folk speech and folk language. Oral literature is the rep repository of the critical knowledge, philosophy and wisdom of non-literate or pre-literate society. This literature through narrative, poetry, song, dance, myths and fables and text for, for religious ritual provide a treasure of the meaning of life ex as experienced by the society at a particular time and place which its unique existential, existential challenges. It encapsulates the traditional knowledge, beliefs and values about the environment and the nature of the society itself. It arises in response to the universal aesthetic impulse to provide narratives that explain the nature of life and describes human response to challenges. This literature portrays how one is to live a moral life and explain the nature of one's relationship to divinity. It thus retains the society's knowledge to be passed on to succeeding generation. It contains the history of the society and, and, it ex and, and its experiences. In various forms, the oral literature portrays the society's belief system and makes sense of life. It provides a guide to human behavior and how to live one's life. Oral literature also serves to communicate ideas, emotions, belief and appreciation of life. This literature defines, interprets and elaborates on the society's vision of reality and the danger in the world. It deals with the human adventure and achievements against odd. Oral literature is also sometimes uh, ent entertainment and fosters feeling of solidarity with others who have had similar experiences in some. Uh, oral literature may encompass many genres of linguistic experience and may perform many different functions of the society. So, uh, keeping, the uh, keeping the functions of folklore in the background, we see that uh, oral folklore have many functions to perform in a society. Now, let us go to the next division of folkloric material that is material culture or physical folk life as it is sometimes called. 
They include the folk crafts, the folk art, folk architecture, folk costume, folk cookery. The term material culture emphasizes how inanimate things within the environment act on people and are acted upon by people for the purpose of carrying out social function, regulating social relation and giving symbolic meaning to human activity. Studies of material culture focus upon things not just as material objects, but also on how they reflect our meanings and uses. Material culture reflects how people and things interact, how things structure human lives and actions. Material culture entails preservation of heritage, memory itself is material. Now, let us look at the third division of folklore that is folk, social folk custom. Uh, they encompass the festival and celebration, recreations and games, folk medicine, folk belief and religion. Like customs, folk customs play an important role in managing and shaping social life with the conservative character traditional tradition influence social institutions such as the family, law, religion and politics. Art and science are less affected by traditions. When a person goes against a community or society's tradition, he will face sanctions in appropriation to the degree of that resistance. The punishment can be of different level. It might be ostracism or even or just as uh, something like ridiculing him. Just as custom, they are laws originating from, originating from the traditions. Laws are intended to establish appropriate sentences for violations of tradition. In general, traditions govern a wider area than legal codes. Now, the last division of folklore that is the performing folk arts, which folk drama, folk music, folk uh, dance fall under this category. Performing folk art form a part of a country's unique identity. Perform, folk performing arts are a part of our history and they are often revealed a lot about the period this art had developed. Perf folk performing art embody, embodies fundamental values of great worth to our culture and nation. They help keep the people connected to the ancestry and traditions. They help to preserve the cultural unity of the people. So, these are the functions that the, the uh, folkloric material perform in a society. In a major article published in 1954, folklorist William Bascom argued that folklore can serve four primary functions in a culture. Folklore lets people escape from repression imposed upon them by society, example tall tales, where you laugh and you know uh, you make uh, jokes out of things happening around you. Folklore validates culture, justifies its rituals and institution to those who perform and observe them. Folklore is a pedagogic device which reinforces moral and values and builds wit, examples carry stories, moral lessons, etc. Folklore is a means of applying social pressure and exercising social control. Example, the boy, the, this is a story that uh, a boy who cried wolf you know finally was it eaten by the wolf because he was lying. So, it, uh, folklore also you know try to impose uh, social order, so that people are uh, you know uh, virtuous. It is often said that folk art must be studied in its context, it, it cannot be removed from the context and they are best understood when we look them against the context of the origin. There are contrasting views on folk art. One view holds that the value of folk art lies in its ability to communicate information about the society in which it was made. Opposed to them and each other are two groups of historians. One camp feels that it is possible to study folk art for its aesthetic merits alone without considering its sociological origin or utilitarian properties. Another group of historians argue that consideration of both the context and the appearance of folk art is vital for appreciation of the object classified in the category. So, friends, from the next class onwards, we will look closely into the folk arts of, of India and see how it has been studied. Following that, we will see how science and folk art can come together to have a meaningful dialogue. That is all for today. Thank you.